Hi, my name is Rajesh. Over the past many years that the kite flying per se has evolved into a certain type of level that we adopt as a sport. From mere flying to a more a professional approach that has got into uh, people to many part of the world and uh, that we see in any festivals in across the globe or for that matter in our own state Kerala that we see a lot of people fly the kites. I have with me today a great personality, a lady friend, a kiter, a passionate, uh, a writer, author from Chicago, Miss Patty Gibbons, who have wrote a book about the modern kite flyer. And I have some questions as usual when I have gone to the book and I have uh, thought of uh, putting up a little bit to more understand, uh, to make you also know that overall the how the people that how uh, you know looked at as a sport as a kite and how the kite has evolved over a few years and many experts that we talked about and she has a lot to say about it she's the author of the modern kite flyer hi patty how are you hi i'm patty gibbons okay now tell me about your book the modern kite flyer it's the modern kite flyer Voices of Those Pulling the Strings, and it's a collection of biographies on 75 um, important kite flyers um, that all do different things. Um, I write about kite flyers. I started, um, my interest in kiting started in about 1995. I was um, a graduate student at the University of Washington in Seattle very close to the World Kite Museum in Long Beach, Washington. It's the home of the Washington State International Kite Festival. And I was studying um, how to work in a museum, and the Kite Museum was uh, about five years old at the time, and they were looking for an intern. And so for that summer, I got to learn about kites and was blown away and thought it was pretty amazing. And um, the museum founder, Kay Beezing, she got me involved in interviewing kite flyers. Um, she wanted to create an oral history program for the archive, for the museum, and it was so much fun that, you know, I couldn't stop. And I came back the next summer, and I kept interviewing people, and then I graduated, and I moved back home to Chicago, and I started interviewing people in the Midwest and in the United States, and when I went on vacations, and Kay kept um, interviewing people, and we'd meet up occasionally um, at, you know, the AKAs on different conventions and interview people. And I think in around 2002, uh, Kay approached me with an idea to turn the content of the interviews into um, stories for the AKAs magazine, Kiting Magazine. And so I started a column called Voices from the Vault, and we featured one flyer from the archive with every issue. And I think at around the 50th inter or issue, I started thinking this would make a nice book. And so started assembling um, ideas and interviewing other people. And I found a publisher, McFarland Publishers, and we went from there. And um, the book has 75 different flyers. And by no means is that comprehensive of all the flyers that are out there. Um, I like to think this is just a start, and maybe there'll be another book or something someday. Um, the book has five chapters, and I organize it into friendly flyers. These are people that I think are good representatives of how fun kiting can be as a sport, as a hobby, as, a, as an activity. Um, and then the next chapter are stories about people that are known for their handiwork, that really can um, make nice kites. They're, they're accomplished sewers and um, artists, and, and they are known for the beautiful kites that they make. The third chapter is about innovators and artists that come to kiting and use kites to um, do, do something really special. Um, they could be artists, um, they could be scientists, they, um, they come from different walks. They're just, the common thread there is that they're innovative. And the fourth chapter is about clubs, organized kiting, people that hold roles in organized kite clubs that want to give people 
they give up their time so people can enjoy kiting the way they do and uh, make it um, more fun and promote kiting. And the last chapter, I wanted to look at people that make a living in kites and they're in the kite trade and what they do to, to promote kites and the commercial side of kiting. Um, so I hope if you get to, a chance to read the book that you enjoy it and um, you know and know that any, any um, omissions just means we haven't been able to talk to them yet, but we'd love to. It's actually a very synonymous in the childhood and uh, uh, the kind of uh, sport that we adopt or we like, especially it has two points. One is artistic point and second is the skill. When I say the artistic point, it means that you need to make a kite and the kite that you make, which has already your freedom of expression that is put in to the form of art, be it in any shape. Second is a sport part and the sport were from a mere kite flying a single line kite to uh, uh, you know a four line kites or the double line kites we call it aerobic or a sport or a strand kite what we call it all over the world it has gone up like that i think the same is true now with um people um younger younger generations many people comment that it's hard for clubs to recruit young younger people um and then they comment that children and um, today or even teenagers are more interested in indoor activities, playing with electronics, um, being in a virtual world, and not really making things. It isn't necessarily a, perceived as a maker's culture or things that um, people did. Um, making kites might be old timey or, or something. Um, but I do see a, a different twist um, to younger generations now where some people get interested into traction kiting and sport kiting and kite surfing and um, bugging or just something where the kite is a propeller, it's, a, it's the tool to their sport. And I have a really strong hunch that it, over time people will start getting interested. These people who came to kiting through sport kites um, might kind of work their way into an interest of single leg kites or designing kites or um, traveling with kites and widening what they do um, uh, with kites as uh, the object of interest themselves, not necessarily as what they can do to, you know, jump or jump really high in the ocean and stuff like that. Um, so I do see that as something that could happen very easily. I have seen many world across that any festivals that I go, I look at those perspective my, because I am a kiter by passion and I make my own kites and I make largely the cultural and artistic kites and I believe in uh, transmitting some sort of a messages through my medium of communication that I believe in my kite and that evolves a lot of scope for the people who see to uh, ably understand what kind of the kite and what as I said the legend it says this is something that is culturally uh, instigated an idea that we have inculcated to build up a kite so I have uh, gone on this for certain uh, period of life to understand many and to my interest there are people who have from art to sport to the game now and we are looking at a day that very soon uh, Olympic probably taking this kite as a part of a sport being active with the kite then there are, i found that there are people that really enjoy making kites it stretches their imagination um challenges their design some people pick up a lot of people pick up sewing as an adult um making kites that um they didn't you know didn't have a background in that some people come to kiting with a, um, a sewing background and others don't and they pick it up and they find that um classes and retreats and books, um, online tutorials, and just word of mouth with friends are really helpful in getting, um, getting their, their kites uh, made. And um, I, I really feel like any kite that you want to fly is a great kite. And if you made it, that's wonderful. And if you, you fly somebody else's kite, I know people appreciate that and um, it doesn't go unnoticed. Um, 
it's really wonderful to know about the book that you wrote the modern kite flyer and i think the compilation of the kite flyers or we call it uh, fondly the string pullers have um, uh, told about the kind of the world they are in and also and you transcripted it of course in the way that it look um, you know how do you uh, because you have uh, you know commonly understood about the thread between all this and um, how we will be able to distinguish that old generation and the new generation uh, would you like to say about anything on that um, old generations of kite flyers and new generations of kite flyers and what gets um, the younger people interested in kites and you know even with the older generation of kite flyers and especially with the people in the book I, I've really found that um, you know a lot of people have just entry-level experiences with kites as kids it, in the US it's something they do in the springtime usually with their siblings or friends in the neighborhood if you go to a park or your backyard and you fly a kite that was purchased at you know a very inexpensive one it might crash and burn um, some generations and some people may their first kite might have been handmade they may have found plans in magazines or in a book or you know their parents or grandparents um, work with them on their first kite and you fly it with some amount of frustration and some amount of uh, joy but you tuck the memories back into your head and some you know for most of the flyers that I talk to those um, those memories come back in adulthood and some people just come to kiting in adulthood new and they've never really flown a kite and some are just really have been wowed by modern kiting and the you know, inflatables or dual line kites or sport kites or or something about a newer modern kite that wasn't part of their childhood um, fascinates them and sets their or their you know interests alive about trying to see what else they can learn about kiting. Um, so I've seen that. Excellent. And uh, uh, towards. Uh... The end of the final question, I would say, uh, of course, I have a lot of many questions to ask about, but uh, I will, uh, you know, uh, summarize uh, to uh, to understand uh, uh, more on to, uh, you know, um, what do you think about uh, you being an author and how uh, that you fly your kites and how did you judge by yourself uh, uh, to be or as a kiter? seeing people, talking to people, seeing why they made it. And for me, that um, that's really my hook, is finding out what inspires somebody to make their kites, to be in kiting, to give up their time, um, their leisure time, their time with their family, their time away from their job. Um, usually over a course of a pretty good part of their lifetime, um, it fascinates me. And I just seeing how they interact with other people and they want inspiration, build on the next inspiration, and maybe they come in with a background in science or a background um, in engineering and they, uh, they're interested in learning how to better fly something, or they come in with an art background or just an interest and they want to develop their skills, their artistic and creative and craft skills. Um, some people just want to have fun, and that's pretty amazing. And um, that's always always needed in um, the kite world or any part of the world and um, there are people that find it very peaceful to fly kites and meditative and a reminder of the fun and joy that can be in kiting so I, I feel like you know my favorite kite to fly is is one with somebody else and um, especially at, at um, a kite festival or gathering just being wowed by looking up and know two kites are alike and just Knowing in the sky there's a million different stories and just taking the time to talk to people and find out more about them and their interest in kiting. Um, so I guess mine is one step removed on what my favorite kite is. Um, 
I hope that answers all your questions. And, and thanks again, Raj. It was great talking to you. Thank you very much, uh, Patty. It was very nice, lovely talking to you to understand about the kind of uh, the kite flying, uh, uh, the activity per se, uh, not just only the book, but also your wide, uh, uh, you know, expectator uh, point of view that one can understand. And I'm sure this will definitely enhance the possibility of uh, uh, kite flying uh, uh, per se. And the interest to lie is... Uh, uh, the, to those who, who would want to be like more of an enthusiast who would want to be part of this uh, you know really a novel uh, life game I would say and uh, it was really nice talking to you Patty thank you very much we'll be in touch thank you very much and uh, have a good day stay safe stay healthy